Okay, in this video, we're going to look at sensors. Now, if you want to measure a certain parameter or condition in the outside world, you need some sort of sensor. Now, you could go out and you could buy a simple thermistor or an LDR, a light-dependent resistor, and hook it up to your microcontroller. But then you've got to put it in some kind of enclosure to protect it from the elements if it's going outdoors. Now, there's another source of sensors, and that's from the automotive industry, because your car is full of sensors, like this one here. Now this is a crankshaft position sensor and basically what it does, it measures the RPM of your engine and feeds it to the computer. Now if you look at the packaging of automotive sensors, they're very robust because they have to go into a harsh environment. They got water resistant connectors and they have a very solid way of mounting them. So next we'll look at other sensors that we could use from the automotive industry. Okay, the other sensor we're going to look at is the airbag sensor. Now there's a few types. There's a mechanical type and there's an electronic type. Now the mechanical type consists of a tube with a ball bearing in it and on one side of the tube is a magnet and on the other side of the tube is a set of electrical contacts. Now normally the ball bearing is attached to the magnet but during a collision the ball bearing is torn away and sent into the contacts closing them activating the airbag. Now the other mechanical airbag sensor is an offset weighted cam. Now during a collision this, this cam rotates and closes the contacts and activates the airbag. The electronic airbag sensor is basically an accelerometer and when it senses a certain amount of g-force it triggers the airbag. Now the mechanical airbag sensors can be used for an impact detector and the output is a contact closure so it's easy to interface to a microcontroller. Okay the next sensor we're going to look at is a temperature sensor. Now this is a coolant temperature sensor so it measures the temperature of the coolant inside the engine. Now they're usually mounted on top of the intake manifold or the engine block. Now this is a resistive type of sensor, so the resistance will change as the temperature changes. Now there's two types, there's a one terminal, where the resistance change will be between the terminal and the ground of the engine, and the other one is a two terminal, which is isolated, and the resistance will change between the two wires of the sensor. The other sensor is an air temperature sensor, and this is a hot platinum wire sensor. So it has a platinum wire running through the sensor, and a current is put through the wire, and the wire is heated up. Now when air passes over the wire, it cools down the wire and the resistance changes and the current will change so we get a different voltage output of this sensor. Another type of sensor is a thermistor sensor which is basically just your thermistor. So it's a resistor that changes value with different air temperature. Okay, the next sensor we're going to look at is the knock sensor. Now this sensor detects detonation or pre-ignition which causes pinging or knocking in the engine and that information is sent back to the computer to change the timing of the engine. Now this sensor is a piezo sensor so it puts out a voltage which follows the intensity of the knocking or pinging. So you can use this sensor as a vibration sensor and feed that voltage into the input of an analog to digital converter or a microcontroller for a vibration detector. Okay, Next we're going to look at the crankshaft position sensor which we saw in the very beginning of the clip. Now this is a Hall effect sensor, so it has a digital output. So you have a negative going pulse on the output of this sensor when the Hall effect is triggered. Now this sensor keeps track of the position of the, of the crankshaft and also the RPM of the engine. The last sensor we're going to look at is the throttle position sensor. Now this senses how far down the gas pedal is being pressed and that information is sent back to the computer. Now this sensor is basically a potentiometer and it measures angular rotation with varying voltage. So you could feed this into the analog digital converter of a microcontroller and calibrate it for angular rotation for any of your projects. So next we're going to look at some interfaces, how we can interface some of these sensors to a microcontroller. Okay, here's a simple way to interface your sensor to your microcontroller. And if you have a resistive sensor that changes resistance, say with temperature, you could use it in a voltage divider configuration like we see here. Now R1 value is selected to give this, the sensor a good dynamic range and the output of the sensor is fed into one channel of your AD, ADC converter on your microcontroller and as the resistance changes on your sensor your ADC value will change from 1023 towards 0. Okay, if you have a three terminal sensor like our crankshaft sensor it needs power so you have to supply 5 volts in ground to the sensor and the output of the sensor is open collector so the user has to supply a pull-up resistor to VCC, to 5 volts in this case, and then the output is fed to one of the GPIO inputs of the microcontroller. 
So as the sensor is triggered, you'll get a negative going pulse into the GPIO, which will be sensed by the micro. So next we'll hook up the crankshaft sensor to our Arduino Nano, and we'll have a look at its operation. Okay, I have my crankshaft sensor hooked up to my Arduino Nano, and the sensor is powered up through the Nano, plus 5 volts, that's coming from the USB port and the output of the sensor is fed into one of the GPIO pins of the Nano and the Nano is looking for a negative going pulse and when it sees a negative going pulse it will toggle the LED on pin 13 which is also the LED on the, on the board. So I'll take my screwdriver and if I tap the sensor you can see the LED is toggling so the screwdriver is inducing magnetic field into the Hall effect sensor causing a ne negative going pulse And I can also simulate a gear on a crankshaft each time the tooth goes by it will toggle the LED. So if you're looking for some sensors for your project and you can be creative you might want to look into automotive sensors.